Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech, and today we are going to be doing a quick review on the Latte Panda, which is a SBC with preloaded Windows 10 and Arduino built in. A perfect project for a car PC. So let's check it out. So guys, I am not being sponsored for this video. They're not paying me to do this video and I don't have to submit my video for any review or something like that just to get that out of the way because they got some heat from another video from before. With that out of the way, let's get started. Okay, taking a look at this board, I actually really enjoy playing around with it because it has Arduino built in, which isn't a really big matter because you could always buy an Arduino and just put it into another computer and operate it that way. But it's a low power solution. To start off, this is an Intel Atom quad core, similar to what we were talking about on our previous devices, which is the Azul Quantum Access LAN. They have the same chipset. This is uh, two gigs of RAM, 32 gigs by flash. And most notably, this has a built-in display port for their own IPS panels that they deliver. And also a touchscreen device that you could put on top of the IPS. You also have HDMI output, two USB 2.0 ports, and one USB 3.0 port. On the opposite side, you have the LAN, an audio jack, and then expandable memory for another micro SD card. It also has built-in Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, so you don't have to worry about connectivity. You have, you have it all, basically. Now, it, this board is slightly bigger than the Raspberry Pi, but it no matter if you're going to hide it in something or stash it away, it, it works fine. If you check out their website, they also have cases that you could purchase for this device for now. The only downside that I was playing around with is this device gets hot, gets really hot. If you look at the underside of it, it has like this little film pad on the bottom right, it, that spot gets really hot. I could leave it against the table and next thing you know it's like 70 degrees Celsius and I measured it. It's, it gets really hot to that touch. You could also almost burn your fingers. Now, um, this is a different convention than you're used to on an Arduino. Uh, basically on top, if you take a look at these pins, yes, the pins are similar to what Arduino has. It has the analog, it has the digital pins, it has the five volts out and all that stuff, but the layout is slightly different. So you're gonna have to follow their graph on their, uh, or the diagram on their website just to figure out which pin is what. They actually have a lot of examples that you could actually code in C Sharp or other languages just to run these Arduino pins, which is awesome because not everybody runs or knows how to uh, code in C. So you could actually use different languages. Now on the bottom, you have a lot of these digital outputs, um, these little pins that looks like you could stick a fan on there, which I basically think that's what it's for. It has five volts on each rail and then it has the ground and then a digital pin on top. On the right side, you have the six pins that you're use, usually used to, uh, where you could plug in other devices uh, for SPI and stuff like that to connect. The power supply that we recommend or that they recommend is a 2.1 amp. I definitely recommend anything higher, 2.1 amp or more. I'm using a 2.5 amp, five volts to power this thing. Uh, I haven't really tried overclocking or installing any crazy software on there. I did install Office and Skype. That does work. The IPS panel that comes with it's amazing. It comes with a, a really super ultra thin. And then if you're able to create a bezel or something that you can stick into a car or, or actually create a frame for it, that thing is really nice. It's actually really good to look at. I've been actually watching a lot of Netflix on there. I just use it for a Netflix device right now. Now, coding in Arduino is pretty easy. You could just run the Arduino software, stick in the COM port, select the correct board, and then uploading an example. Uh, another thing that I didn't like about this device is this blue light that flashes. It's actually very obnoxious. I know it's to notify you when Arduino is running, but it gets really obnoxious when you run like a blinky or something where it just blinks on and off. I mean, I probably could stick some tape over it to hide it, but that does get a little obnoxious. The button configurations was a little confusing. The first button is the reset button, so it doesn't power on the device. The second button, to power on the device, you have to hold it for like about three seconds to turn that on. And then all the way to the left, you have this little silver button, which I thought automatically was the power button, but no, that is actually to power the Arduino or reset the Arduino board that is built in. So whether you guys are using this as a project or for a car PC or something like that, this actually works very well in a small server home environment because of the USB 3.0 port. So we might look into that option in the future or maybe future projects. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed that review. So I have a lot of product reviews coming up because I don't want to do the review and a project together in one video. So that's why I've been shooting out these reviews first because I have a lot of devices that I'm planning to do projects on. So in the following weeks, you're going to notice that I'm going to be pushing a lot of projects. So stay tuned for those. If you guys want to help support these projects, I just created a Patreon page. I'm going to leave a link in the description below that will help me a lot to support all these projects and also get equipment and stuff like that. So check it out. 
it out. If you guys have any questions, leave it in the comments below. I only started playing with this board for a couple of weeks, so I'll try my best to answer everything. If you like this video, please hit that like button. If you haven't done so already, hit that little subscribe button. That helps me a lot. Also gives you notification when the next video is going to be out. Yeah, and as I say in my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.